March 1st, Windy, evicted crippled Jack, palsied Peter, and mumbling Myrtle. <laughs> March 5th, Frost, Mad Malcolm jumped from the church tower trying to fly. <laughs> Died instantly. <coughs> ah, Grant, it's good to be home. Yes, sir. Be it so humble, there's no place like it. Indeed not, sir. London has its excitements. But too much excitement can be injurious to the health crunch. I think there's a bit more to come yet, sir. What do you mean? There's a gentleman in the hall waiting to see you. What does he want? He says it's a private matter. He may be a creditor. Fetch me loaded stick. No, he's a military gent. <laughs> then it is the law. I know it. Father, there are men at the gate, surly fellows holding cudgels. I knew it. We are to be arrested for debt, Roderick. Quick, the peace door. <laughs> Colonel Barrington at your service. Colonel Barrington. Do I have the honour of addressing Squire Haggard? You do, sir. Your servant, sir. And your sir. I represent Sir Joshua Farlaker in this matter. What matter? Some months ago, Sir Joshua challenged you to a duel, sir. You, having insulted his wife, impugned his daughter's honour, and written rude rhymes about him on the walls of several public houses. Well, a little raillery, no more. Has he no sense of humour? Apparently not. He says that when you received his challenge, you were instantly taken ill, <laughs> had to travel to recuperate, and finally were unavoidably detained in London upon pressing family business. Yes, that is true. Well, we now feel the time has come to conclude the matter. Conclude the matter? But I thought Sir Josh would have cooled down by now. Reconsidered the matter. On the contrary, he is keener than ever. <laughs> he suggests that you meet him at Potter's Field by the hanging tree at dawn where this affair may be satisfactorily concluded. And if pressing family business calls you away again. Perhaps you could inform the people that we have posted at your gates, front and back. We could then, no doubt, bring the matter forward. What are you suggesting, sir? That my father would flee? That he's a coward? Tell Sir Josh that we damn him for his confounded impudence and look forward to giving him a taste of powder and shot. Steady, Roderick. <laughs> then you will act as your father's second? Right gladly, sir. Good. We shall, of course, as challengers, provide the surgeons and the wagon to take away the fallen. Ha! Huh, tell that to Sir Josh. He'll need them. My father shall walk from the field while Sir Josh will be leaking like a sieve. <laughs> Admire spirit, sir. Why, thank you, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> we are residing at the Swan with two necks. Perhaps you'll call upon us to discuss the rules of engagement. I presume it'll be pistols. Swords being hot work for the older man. Of course it'll be pistols. My father would use nothing else. Then I bid you good day, sir. Good day. And tell Sir Josh he'd be wise to put his affairs in order. Well, son, sir. Well said, Roderick. Now, quick, through the priest's door. You'll never get away, father. They're all round the grounds. No, you must stay and fight or forever be branded a coward. May I speak, sir? No, you may not, Grunge. Let him speak, father. <laughs> oh, you may speak, Grunge. If you run now, you run forever, sir. <laughs> but if you kill Sir Josh, your reputation will be made. He's the finest shot in five counties. He's killed seven men in duels. Five with pistols, two with swords. And they say there's two more who'll never walk again. You will be famous. Women will flock to you. All society will talk of your deeds. Yes, and by eliminating Sir Josh, you'll clear the way for me to marry Fanny. What? If you think that's such a good idea, Roderick, why don't you kill him? Because I can't go to Fanny with her father's blood on my hands. Now, I must go to the tavern to discuss the rules of engagement and then view the killing ground. <laughs> the killing ground? He appears to be looking forward to it, Grant. Oh, we all are, sir. Everyone loves a good duel. Oh. <laughs> 
Has it occurred to you, Grimes, that I may be the one to be killed? You, sir? The thought never crossed my mind. Mm. But, um, since you mention it... What, Grimes? It is the matter of this month's wages. Vulture! <laughs> Ah, uh, Grant, has Master Roderick returned yet? Uh, no, sir. I believe he's discussing the rules of engagement over a glass of Madeira. But he's certainly taking his time. I can see you grow impatient. Looking forward to it, sir. <laughs> yes, yes. Were it not for the eyes. <laughs> the eyes? These old eyes aren't what they were, Grant. I'm not complaining. But I shall be fortunate if I hit me mark. Then why not use the sword? Your late father always preferred the sword. The haggard blade. Ah. Oh, how he made it sing. <laughs> it never failed. They never got near him. Of course they didn't. Because he was two foot longer than anybody else's. <laughs> He's been banned from competition since 1750. <laughs> Besides, I couldn't use the sword, not with the arthritis. <laughs> arthritis and bad eyesight, you are in a state. Yes. Aren't? If I were to fall, Grange, mm -hmm. I have left you well provided for. Thank you, sir. On the other hand, perhaps you don't wish to gain from another man's death. Oh, I don't mind. After all, you can't take it with you. <laughs> no. If I do fall, I'd like to be buried with my wife, Tibbs. Right. She's not dead yet, sir. Oh, no, I forgot. In that case, I wish to be interred in the tomb of my ancestor, Sir Andrew the Crusader. Oh, that would mean cutting your feet off. Uh, sir Andrew was a small man and the tomb's on the short side. Of course, I, I always meant to enlarge it. There's so much undone, oh. Grunge. I had oh. meant to improve the conditions of the tenants, raise the servants' wages. Yours included, Grunge? Oh, yes, sir. Now, you may laugh at this, but I always intended to adopt you. What? Hmm? I was having the papers drawn up there with the lawyer. Of course, it's too late now. Oh, so much to do. Mm. So little time. Any, um, any last requests? Sure. Yes, now you mentioned there is. Mm. I'd like you to acquire some women's clothes for me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well. I must say, that's a surprise after all these years. I, I, I didn't realise you had those tendencies. Still, if, uh, if that's your last request... No, it's not that, you fool. The house is being watched. We are continually observed through spyglasses. If I were to leave, they'd seize me. But if a female servant bidding a fond and tearful farewell of her master were to leave, no one would suspect. You mean you're going to bolt? Yes, and I'd prefer to do it before Master Roderick returns. Now, summon Betty. Right. Sir? Uh, Betty, your master is in grave danger. He has to fight Sir Josh, who has never failed in a duel. Oh, I know, sir. It is the talk of the village. They say you'll never see another sunrise. <laughs> yes. Uh, would you do something to help a man in such grave peril? You have a request, sir? I have a strange request, Betty. <laughs> would you remove your clothes for me? <laughs> Sir, if this be your last day on earth, should you not turn your mind to other things, not spend it in debauchery and lust, no, no. is this a fit way to prepare for the judgment to come? On the other hand, if it is your dying wish, how can I refuse? To sacrifice my chastity would be a sorry thing. Will you tell us to shut up, Ranch? <laughs> I'm not trying to seduce you. I only want your clothes. That is a strange request. But why, sir? You will be grunge, I will be you, and grunge will be me. That's even stranger. <laughs> then what do we do? Then I make my escape. Oh. Will you do it for me, Betty? You'll have to wear my mother's clothes. Mine will never encompass your lusty frame. So be it. <laughs> and you want me to wear Grunge's clothes? They will be fumigated. <laughs> then I agree. <laughs> Ready, Grunge? Yes, sir. You won't laugh. Of course not. <laughs> How do I look? Stunning, sir. You're laughing, Grunge. No, sir. 
Now for our little tableau, which will deceive me enemies. Stand by the window where you may be clearly seen. Two servants bidding a fond farewell to their tragic master. Oh. Now this means I must embrace you, Grant. I can stand it, sir. What? <laughs> but first, let me get into the part. <laughs> oh. 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 What do you think you're doing, Grant? I'm being you, sir. That's nothing like me. I don't mince about like a lady's dressmaker. Now, get on. You may embrace me, Grant. Oh, that's enough. Embrace me. Uh, uh, enough, Grant. Uh, what do you think they'll make of that? It's not as if we've been close. They'll be talking in the village after this. Now, the two servants leave bidding a fond farewell. It's Roderick, he's back and it's oh. the worst for drink. Quick, Betty, the, the priest door. <laughs> Glass of Madeira, Betty, and look sharp. Ah, I must say they were damned hospitable, if a little haughty. Sir Josh was at pistol practice. Never missed his target once. I said, wait until the target's firing back with lethal accuracy. It'll be a different thing then, I warrant, eh, Father? Ah. <laughs> How shrunken you look, but be of good heart. I think he was in the mood to call it off if I were to forsake Fanny, but I told him never. <laughs> constant I am and constant will I remain. <laughs> Father? <laughs> Get it. I'm sorry, Roderick. You disappoint me, Father. If you have no thought of your own honour, then consider mine. Never be able to walk erect again. Well, I may be in the same position. He's a crack shot. Only at ten paces. That's why I insisted on fifteen. He won't find you an easy mark. Especially if you stand sideways and make the target as small as possible. May I say something? No, you may not, Grant. Let him speak, Father. <laughs> you may speak, Grant. If you do stand sideways, you'll be a bigger target than ever. And besides, where there's two of anything, the bullet will go through both. In that case, I think I'll face fat with Ah, don't worry, Father. Even if you hit, few shots prove lethal. There are only three fatal areas. The head, the heart and the lungs. And the tripes. <laughs> and possibly the tripes. And the liver. Yes, there is the liver. And the lights. Shut up, Grant. <laughs> Apart from that, you should survive, Father. And he may miss you altogether. Not Sir Josh. He never misses. He's known as the Leaden Death. <laughs> he has a wogdom with a deformed barrel. And we have a manton with a rifle barrel. Deadly at 15 paces. The ball filed to a fine surface, the powder measured to the grain. Feel the balance, Father. Ah. Oh, it's fine, it's good, you're mm. right, it's damn good. Finely balanced, easy on the trigger, well sighted. Mm, yes, I like it. A manton, eh? Never misses, Father. Mm. <laughs> you missed. <laughs> ah. I think we need to experiment a little further. Well, think of something, or I may have to club him to death. Sir Joshua to see you, sir. Don't lose your temper, Father. I'll try and restrain myself, Roderick. Ah, oh, Sir Joshua. Before you vent your spleen upon me, sir, allow me to explain. My daughter has persuaded me that there is no necessity for bloodshed, that a written apology will suffice. Oh, of course. Now, why didn't we think of this before? Excellent. We accept. Yes. Grunge, pen and ink for Sir Josh. What? No, it is your father who must apologise. The right what? My father apologises so that people may call him a coward. My father says what he means and means what he says. He'll never apologise, and he damns you for a prating coxcomb. Roderick! Your father has an unbridled tongue that may cost him his life. I didn't say anything. His life? Take care. He who once did sell the lion's skin was later killed in hunting him. What? Father, you promised not to be angry. Very well. After all, this is no less than I expected. You're a proud, haughty rogue, Haggard, but I can't help admiring your courage. Thank you. <laughs> I would not kill you. I've sent too many men to glory. Besides, your death will only serve to draw attention to this sordid affair. So if your son will agree to forsake Fanny, I will call the matter closed. <gasps> Roderick! I will never forsake Fanny. I shall love her to the last days of my life and die with her name upon my lips. Oh, Roderick! I am transported. Then it will mean your father's death. Then, so be it. Father! You promised there'd be no bloodshed. I'm doing my best, Fanny, but this man is obdurate. 
There is one other way. Oh, what? If you, Fanny, were to forswear Roderick and never see him again, I will forego the duel. Forswear Roderick? If only I could. But you may as well ask the moon not to rise and follow the sun, the willow not to lean towards the pool, the bee not to rob the flower of its nectar. I would dissemble, but this unruly heart would betray me. I cannot forsake Roderick, even though it means his father lying killed in his grave. He understands, Fanny. He knows that love must nail its colours to the mast and damn the consequences. Love is above such earthly things. He understands that too. We must be constant. You've certainly chosen a fine time to be constant, Robin. <laughs> then we meet at dawn, Haggard. Ah, I see you have a manton. Yes, and it's a deadly weapon, Sir Josh. Should we see your glass, Fanny? Good, but not as good as a Wogden. Come on, Fanny. Come, Father, for heaven's sake. If this is to be your last night on earth, be merry. You don't seem to be enjoying your food, sir. Anything else I can get you? Two cods in oyster sauce? Fowl boiled, chine of mutton, codling tart and cream. Don't give him too much. He'll be a bigger target than ever. No, thank you, Grant. I seem to have lost my appetite. Then what about a wench from the village, sir? Maybe a last chance. Never mind a girl from the village. What about Betty? She could make a man forget tomorrow. She could make a man forget his own name. <laughs> Betty? Yeah, spend your last night in the arms of Venus and wake refreshed. Why not? Betty! <laughs> Betty, why these widow's weeds? Couldn't you put on a more cheerful aspect? I'm sorry, sir, but I haven't slept. Every time I close my eyes, I see coffins. What? And now, tonight, the great clock in the bell tower has stopped. Soon, the last time the clock stopped was when your father died. Did you want something, sir? Uh, uh, I think I've changed my mind. Sir? I couldn't cut the mustard anyway. Ah, oh, be a good heart, Father. Many duels are fought where no one is hurt. Pistols are fired in the air and grievances forgotten. Not the last one I saw. That was a real duel. Swords, pistols and teeth. And how it, how it spread. All were killed, even the servants. And two men who come into the field to dig turnips. Shut up! <laughs> Colonel Barrington to see you, sir. Look unconcerned, Father. It'll strike terror in their hearts. Your servant, sir. If this is another attempt to wriggle out of the situation, Barrington, we'll have none of it. Let us confine our exchanges to powder and shot from now on. I quite agree, and we'll waste no more words. It is simply this. Sir Joshua extends his compliments and says that when he has concluded this affair with your father, he intends to confront you shortly afterwards. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> he says you are an impudent young puppy, a threat to his daughter's happiness, and a perpetual thorn in his side. He says if you do not renounce Fanny, you will die. Ah, well, when you say renounce... Renounce her? Never. What? <laughs> he will be faithful to Fanny, even unto death. Am I not right, Robert? Um, yes. <laughs> the answer is as I expected. Here is Sir Joshua's glove on it. Ah. <laughs> we meet at dawn. At dawn? Ah, that's out of the question. I have no second. Oh, um... Uh, <laughs> I'll be your second, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Grunt. <laughs> then that's arranged. One moment. Are you the servant, Grunge? Yes, sir. My servant extends his compliments, says he don't like your face, and looks forward to crossing swords with you as soon as the gentlemen have finished. <laughs> and now I bid you good night. Until dawn, gentlemen. Quick, through the priest door! <laughs> You'll never get away, Roderick. Besides, are we not men of honour? Run now, Grunge, and you run forever. Yes, sir. And what will Fanny make of all this? No, you must stay, Roderick, and fight him. But I don't want to fight him, Father. He hasn't done me any harm. Not yet. And I don't want you to fight him either, Roderick. Because if you fight him, it means I've lost. But who knows? I may yet win. 
He's as much chance of being struck by lightning. Oh, was that, Grant? Nothing. My father never lost a duel. That's because his sword was two foot longer than anyone else's. <laughs> he didn't lose with pistols, either. Even when he had the ague, the dropsy, and the touch of the French sickness, he never missed his mark. How so? He had a special pistol. Was it a Manton? No. A Wogden? No. <laughs> and had it built to his own specifications. <laughs> it was no... <known. laughs> As the Haggard Invincible. <laughs> My thunder! Why didn't you mention this before, Father? Well, I thought it might be considered cheating. <laughs> what a size! Mm. What, um, what ball would that take, then? <laughs> Not a ball, Grange. Rusty nails. <laughs> Is everything to your satisfaction, gentlemen? Yes. Indeed. The gentlemen over there are the surgeons. We have a clergyman for the last rites and a litter for the wounded. You've arranged things very well. My compliments to you. I suppose it is too late to expect you gentlemen to settle matters without bloodshed. Out of the question. Never. Very well. Your pistols are primed and loaded. Your seconds have examined them, gentlemen. I will ask you to stand back to back, cock your pistols, and at my command, take 15 paces. When you have taken 15 paces, I will ask you to turn and then fire. You understand? Are you ready? Ready. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, turn. Honor is satisfied. Run. 